838, Big 550 KTR. I'll check in with uh, Mike Kelly in a bit. Talk about the Tigers being 5-0. and Next hour, there's that new book called League of Denial uh, about the NFL and the concussions and what they knew back in the 80s and the 90s and uh, didn't tell anybody about it, getting a lot of attention with the uh, concussions. So we'll check in with those two authors coming up at uh, 9 o'clock. Right now, though, David Stokes from the Show Me Institute, uh, policy analyst. Good morning, David Stokes. Good morning, McGraw. You uh, want you you called out David Nicholas uh, as a, a column he wrote at the, in the newspaper stltoday.com as being spot on when talking about the uh, post office. He wrote a column a couple days back on what Great Britain is doing with its post office over there. How a few years ago they they basically privatized the post office. They took away the the uh, monopoly on delivering first class mail. And now the that post office is doing an, an initial public offering and becoming even more of a, a privately operated, now public company. And all these things are exactly what we need to do in the United States, starting with eliminating the monopoly on first-class mail. There's no reason that UPS and FedEx shouldn't be able to compete in that in that market if they wanted to. Um, you really think people would come to the table and try and um – try and compete with the post office on first-class mail? I think they would. They'd probably charge more. I mean, there's no way UPS or FedEx is going to make money delivering a, a envelope for 46 cents to your house. Right. But that option should be there for if people wanted to, to use them to do it. I mean, first-class mail is defined by law. There are technical differences between packages, parcels, and whatever. Right. And I don't know why the post office should have the legal monopoly on taking a envelope filled with stuff and putting it in your putting it in your mailbox. But if if that's the case then it would be very easy to deliver mail across town and in big metropolitan areas. But for the rural guys, they'd be left out because it wouldn't be economically feasible for a company to deliver mail to, you know, you know, pick uh, rural Missouri. Uh, Sullivan, Missouri. So therefore, they wouldn't get first-class mail. Well, they would. It would just cost more, <laughs> and they'd be charged more for it. And that would be one of the trade-offs for living in in rural America. You'd have to now pay more for something like that. There are benefits to living in rural America. Houses and land are are a lot less expensive. So it's just part of the the trade-off. And I'm I'm just tired of of constantly subsidizing something that is becoming more and more obsolete over time. And once Maybe once a week, there's something of importance and interest in the mail right. <laughs> in my house. It's, I mean, it's all, yeah. it's all basically junk mail. I, I I check my mail. I'm living in an apartment while they build the house, while uh, McBride builds my house in, in in Cottaville. And I have my. I used to check the mail every day because it was at my front door. Now it's in a, it's in a cluster at the end of the block. So I check it once every two weeks, maybe when I think about it. I go in there. I got one bill in the two or three weeks. Everything else was pure junk. Well, that's that's. How I mean, the, it was like it was like mail. it was like the mail has become obsolete almost in a sense. It has. So why do we keep subsidizing it? And and we shouldn't. And and look, the post office. I'll give them a little bit of credit. They're trying to make some changes. They wanted to eliminate Saturday mail delivery, mm-hmm. and then Congress, both parties, went in and said, "No, you can't do it. We're going to force you to keep." Doing this additional unnecessary move, Saturday mail delivery being probably less important than any of the other days, and they tried to cut it and they weren't allowed to. So it was that was ridiculous. So it's going to be hard to to make these moves. But if look, if Great Britain can do it, and that's what was terrific about Dave Nicholas's column, he described what they did and how it's worked. But that's the thing that's that's really when you get right down to it is totally and completely bogus. Well, you and I both agree. You and I are the same age. We have email. We get to pay our bills online. The bank sends me their statement via email. Um, Right? All of those those things. Um, A couple years ago, they tried to get Social Security benefits sent through electronic means, and there was such a fight because the senior citizens didn't want to adapt. They screamed and yelled and ranted to their congressmen and or elected officials and so the elected officials said hey wait a minute let's not not do it but ultimately it saved a billion dollars in cost and yet the uh, elected officials who run on more efficient government um fought it tooth and nail it's the same thing with the penny it costs more to make a penny than to actually have a penny so we should do away with pennies 
we should do away with Saturday delivery mail. There are all sorts of low-hanging fruit that we should all do, and by golly, we all agree with, but those people complain to their elected officials, and so therefore it stays in place. It stays in place, and it's just evidence of how, unfortunately, when it comes to cutting spending, it's sometimes the blunt across the board cuts are the, and I'm referring to the, the word blunt, not Senator Blunt. Right, right. <laughs> Just sort of across the board hammers are the only way to, to ever get it done. Because we all would argue, well, let's try and do it smart. Let's try and really pick the unnecessary program. But that never happens. As much as that would be preferable, it's, there's no evidence that it would ever be done. So, so then your choice becomes you just keep spending and, and keep growing. And, or because everything you just eliminated, I think the, everything you just said, the large majority of, majority of Americans would agree it's an easy decision, but somehow they can't get done. However, David Stokes, policy analyst for the Show Me Institute, the next time you run for public office and you say, hey, you know what, we're going to privatize the mail, and yes, by golly, mail might be more expensive for you people who live in rural Missouri, you're not going to win your election. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is, this is, this is you know, as Kent Brockman said on The Simpsons, you know, democracy just doesn't work. <laughs> look, look, it's it's tricky. It's it's hard. And and boy, it's that's a hard thing to go and say, yes, obviously, nobody's going to deliver junk mail to your house way out there in, in a not crowded part of the state right. for 46 cents. I mean, if you want it, it's going to cost a lot more. But... They should have to pay more in the same way that people in an urban area pay more for their apartments, their house, or, or a lot of other things. That's the trade-off. Uh, privatizing the, uh, the mail is an interesting, that's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting look. Uh, you've, been, uh, you've come on the show and talked about privatizing water. Uh, you haven't come on and talked about privatizing prisons, have you? I have not, and that was in some of my writing, so... I think uh, people know that's the primary thing that you can't privatize. It's sort of the police powers of the state. Yeah. The the police, the the prison complex, there's a lot of negative effects of that. And because the, because people uh, it's it's a self-fulfilling if you build prisons they'll be filled up and so the company you if you have a prison if a if you have a for-profit prison you're going to want to pr- incarcerate people to make money. And you've seen that happening. You've seen the for-profit prison companies out there lobbying for stricter sentencing for right. various, for, <laughs> at the state level so that more people can go to prison. It's a, privatization works in general because incentives work, and people will, people will seek out their best value, and, and, and if private companies have risk on the table, they'll do it more efficiently. But the incentive su- structure sort of breaks down at the for-profit prison complex world. It's, right. sort, of, it's sort of twisted. I say privatize. Just about everything, but you'd sort of draw the line at, at public safety. So we have seen your limit, then. That yes, that's... We, we have we have reached your limit. Uh, pres- it makes sense though, because you know when the prison guard says we would like to let you out, but we're making too much money off of you, so you're going to stay right there. There's something wrong with that. There's a, there's an ulterior motive. It's almost like paying baseball players uh, on 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 an average on on you know if they bat over 300 or not, because hitting a single might not be the best thing there. You might need to sacrifice there. And so you then skew the game if you're charging or paying people on on how many singles and or doubles they get. Make any sense there? It it makes total sense. You're right. It's it's just Yeah. You have a pitcher not wanting to walk a guy because he gets less money if he walks a guy. So you can't you can't pay on a on a numbers basis, if you will, with baseball. Absolutely. There's there's times in baseball where if there's two outs and nobody on, you're over the plate. You should be trying to hit the ball really hard. You should be going for an extra base hit, right? Because that's really the way you're going to score. But if you're just trying to hit a little single to single to raise your average, make a little more money, it's not going to help the team, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, interesting stuff. All right, next week, don't miss it. You you have a little Obamacare story, affordable health care story you want to bring along. I do. In the in the game of trying to find somebody who was who's been harmed by Obamacare. I found myself. <laughs> we found David Stokes. <laughs> Stay tuned next week. We're going to give you plenty of time. We will discuss next week. So that's uh, next week here on the Big 550 KGS. When can we read you? When can we see you? You can read all the stuff at our – everything we ever release is up on the website instantly, showmeinstitute.org. You can follow us on our blog at showmedaily.org or follow me on Twitter at David C. Stokes. That's David Stokes, Show Me Policy uh, Analyst, with us every uh, Monday. Stick around next week. Should be a good one.
Uh,